You're watching UMC Portal, ultrabooknews.com, video channel on YouTube. My name's Chibi, thanks for watching. On um, this video, we've got something a little different. I don't usually deal with Chromebooks, but I am keeping an eye on it. And uh, the Acer C270 at $199 is actually pretty impressive. Um, not a completely mobile device that we cover on UMC Portal and Ultrabook News because um, it really requires a hotspot. There's no 3G capability in here. Uh, so if you haven't got uh, wireless networking, you're pretty limited as to what you can do. No network, no work. Um, but what we want to do is upgrade this from the 16 gig drive on here to 128 gig drive on here because my digital SSD sent us their M2 SATA drive, the next generation form factor of the smaller. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? I'm going to get it and uh, show it to you. This is the 16 gig drive because we've already done the upgrade uh, now and you'll see the upgrade after this on the video. But here's the original 16 gig drive. I'm just going to take that bit of paper off. NGFF M2 SATA as it's known as today. Um, and the 128 gig came from my digital SSD. So thanks to them for sending the Chromebook and let me check out the Chromebook uh, and also for the drive. I also want to mention that they do have BP4 um, MSATAs as well, which I've used on upgrades before and have been pretty happy with. So my digital SSD, I can give them the thumbs up. They're not paying for this. They just sent the stuff over. I said we'd like to test it, brilliant. Um, right, so let's go into it. Uh, we're gonna take the Chromebook, the Acer C720, and I think it applies to the uh, P version, the touchscreen version as well. I'm gonna upgrade from 16 gig to 128 gig. So the first thing you need to do is to take uh, an SD card. I've got an eight gig one here. I think a four gig one is okay. Just make sure there's nothing that you need on it because it's gonna get uh, formatted. Pop it into the side. And then you need to go to the browser, as always. And uh, you need to go to this URL here, Chrome Image Burner. Can you see that? Chrome colon slash slash image burner. That brings up the uh, recovery media settings and then basically all you do as long as it's detected is just hit OK and that will download the recovery image and then copy everything to the SD card with the right partitioning so that it's ready to be used for as a recovery disk. So that's finished, everything's written to the SD card. We can remove that, shut the system down, and we'll turn it over and we'll undo the back and get the M2 SATA card out. So um, just, just put a little bit of uh, clean white paper from your printer underneath so you don't get any uh, scratches on the on the surface. You won't want to scratch, scratch the top. It's probably quite easy to scratch it on the on the uh, Acer. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go all the way around and uh, take the um, the screws out. I assume actually you need to take all of them out. Sometimes you don't, but I'm going to pull all of them out anyway. And just as a reminder, you've got to avoid your warranty with this. And Acer has kindly put a sticker over one of the one of the screws there so don't forget that one because if you try and pull the back off without undoing that screw you might break something so void your warranty and get that screw out and you're done so this is the bit that helps uh, if you have um, some nails that you don't mind um, <laughs> possibly wrecking girls so I actually I've, I've done that uh, once before the first time you do it, it's a little bit harder what you've got to do is um, just get your nail underneath there or something plastic. I wouldn't recommend anything metal. What happens is it starts to come away if you're lucky. There we go. And then you just work round like that and eventually everything will just pop off. And there you go. We've got inside the Acer. C 
270. Look at that huge battery there compared to the actually the actual motherboard. Uh, things were a lot different uh, in the past. On the right hand side there, here's the M2 SATA Kingston 16 gigabyte uh, drive. That's the one we're going to swap out. So there's just one screw on this by the looks of it. I haven't taken this one out before. So just pull that. Um, oh, there you go. That often happens. And then just, just ease that out. You'll probably have to pull that little bit off there. Recover that screw, otherwise that could cause a problem later. You'll need that one. While we're here then, let's have a quick look around, see if there's anything else that can be done. Everything's pretty much, uh, there's the RAM that's soldered on board there. There is, um, is that a free slot for something here? No, I don't think so. That's a connector. I'm probably going to the screen through the um, hinge there. Oh yeah. And um, this is probably the Wi-Fi module. What a, what Wi-Fi module is that? Um, Qualcomm Atheros. Okay, and that's obviously soldered. So this is how this is how you get um, a cheap computer. <laughs> Solder everything on board, basically. And um, as the, as we as we move to the future, this is going to get smaller and smaller and cheaper and cheaper. So. Um, you look at tablets these days it's so integrated you can barely see any discrete components on them now but uh, anyway good so it's lucky we can actually change the SSD so this is the SSD I'm using thanks to my digital SSD who sent this over to do this test it's a Supercache 2 and an M2 SATA 6G SSD 128 gig is the size there it's pretty small isn't it not much bigger than an SD card and uh, should be pretty easy to just uh, pop that in so we'll just slide that in there and we've got the screw here I'll just make sure that's that's the difficult bit There we go, that's all in there, uh, nice and tight. Now we can put the uh, case on and uh, boot up, that's pretty much it. Case on from the back, just make sure it clicks all the way around to the front. There we go. I won't put the screws in, we'll just turn it over and uh, see what happens. I believe it was in standby anyway, so... Uh, that should actually now turn on and give us an error. Let's see what we got. Chrome OS is missing or damaged. Let's uh, zoom in so you can see the message you get there. Please insert recover USB stick or SD card. So we're going to take our SD card and we're just going to put it in there and see what happens right so clearly it's going to go away and format the drive you're about to recover your computer please make sure it's plugged into a power source we should really do that um, it's going to do it anyway I'll plug into a power source and we'll come back in a minute when that's done so it's complete it didn't take too long about five minutes uh, total to do the recovery we can pull the SD card out now and that will reboot and we should and I'll leave this running we should get uh, straight into Chrome and I should be able to log on. Hopefully it saved my settings or maybe I have to... Um, oh, okay, we're going to start from scratch. Of course that doesn't matter because you don't store any data on your Chromebook until you've done the upgrade of course and then of course you're probably going to store a load of music and videos on there. But uh, on your original Chromebook that's not going to be a problem. So bear in mind actually if you do have uh, stuff in your download folder you probably want to save that off. Uh, before you do the upgrade. One final part to the upgrade it's actually downloading the latest uh, upgrades and I guess it will reboot and um, as it says we'll be on our way. So all my settings seem to have been restored um, the apps that I had on the desktop here have been restored just want to check the downloads folder that hasn't been backed up on, on in the cloud so don't expect your downloads folder to repopulate and um, 
apart from that though everything uh, is looking good good job Google um, so that's a 128 gig SSD upgrade with the my digital SSD M2 SATA or uh, NGFF is the other name for that form factor new, new gener next generation form factor and uh, on the Chromebook uh, Acer 720 so the 720p which is a touchscreen version of this I imagine is going to be pretty much the same so um, if you've got the P version you'll probably be able to get, get uh, get hold of an NGFF uh, M2 SATA card and do exactly the same thing. Very simple. So that was pretty uh, easy. The whole process, I think, uh, would take about 15 minutes if you weren't doing the video like I was doing. And uh, really no problems. As long as you remember to take the SSD and make sure you uh, back up the, uh, the system. Of course, if you put the new drive in and forget, you can always put the old one back in, do the, uh, the uh, recovery disk, and then, and then you're okay. And everything is really simple. Uh, Google have done a nice job with uh, recovery. Now you can uh, get uh, a standard Linux build on this. You'll have to go into the BIOS and change it to a standard uh, uh, BIOS boot. Um, Windows, at the moment, I don't think it's that easy. Uh, there may be people that have done it, but I probably won't be attempting that on, on this one. But uh, for $199 for the uh, Chromebook and for, I think you can get 64 gig uh, um, M2 SATAs from my digital SSD as well. And they're going to be a bit cheaper. But I'll just check the price. One second. Uh, so currently they've got uh, some offers going on. The 128 gig I've got here is now $99. There's a 64 gig at $59.99 and there's a 32 gig as well at uh, $39.99 and don't forget that these are rated for up to 540 megabytes a second so you're gonna get a faster system as well I'm gonna try and do some tests and I'll put the test results in the article on umpcportal.com I think yes we'll put it on umpcportal.com it doesn't really fit with the ultra mobile stuff but I'll put it there anyway because we're tracking the Chromebooks carefully Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and uh, see us on umcportal.com and Ultrabook News as soon as possible. See you then.